Number 9. Ever Prosperity There were two cargo ships called the Ever Prosperity. Known as twin ships, they were based out of the same port in Monrovia, Liberia. They may not be the most spectacular shipwrecks you've ever seen, but they do have an interesting backstory. They both wrecked on the reef coast of New Caledonia, a collection of islands in the South Pacific that belonged to France. The first ship, known as the SS Ever Prosperity, went straight up the West Coast Barrier Reef in 1965. The second Ever Prosperity met the same exact fate five years later in 1970. It hit the sea bottom just 45 miles south of the first wreck while traveling from Sydney to the New Caledonian capital of Noumea. To make matters even more mysterious, both ships were under the command of the same captain when they wrecked. At first glance, the rusting ships are nothing special to look at, but knowing the strange story behind them makes them all the more interesting and mysterious. Number 8. Abaya The Abaya was launched from Irving, New York in 1847. For the first several years, it carried grain and lumber across the Great Lakes. While traveling from Chicago to Oconto, Wisconsin in 1855, it was hit by a sudden gust of violent wind and capsized. It was overtaken by waves while being towed upside down and sank within 15 miles of the Sheboygan coast. The wreck was discovered in 2019 at the bottom of Lake Michigan, where it sits 220 feet beneath the water's surface. It remains mostly intact, according to the Wisconsin Historical Society, which recently announced that the Abaya has been added to the State Register of Historic Places. The agency said that the wreck has given experts a valuable opportunity to learn about early wooden schooner construction on the Great Lakes. As a historic place, the ship is protected by law. It's illegal for divers to remove, destroy, or otherwise interfere with artifacts at the site. Thankfully, due to its depth, it's unlikely that the wreck will receive many visitors. The Great Lakes are known for their ferocious waters, which have taken down thousands of ships over the centuries. Every year, a dangerous weather pattern called the Gales of November causes massive storms that come with 50 mile per hour winds and gusts of up to 100 miles per hour, creating the perfect conditions for sinking a ship. Many of these wrecks are still waiting to be discovered, and it's often a treat for archaeologists when a new one is found. Thanks to the dark, frigid waters they come to rest in, these ships tend to be remarkably intact for their age. Number 7. Bom Jesus Namibia's skeleton coast is famous for its unforgiving conditions, which have left the shoreline littered with hundreds of shipwrecks. While draining a man-made salt lake there in 2008, a group of miners and geologists noticed a piece of wood and metal scattered along the shore. It led them to a buried shipwreck. Experts believe that it's the Bom Jesus, a Portuguese vessel that vanished along with its crew in 1533 while sailing from Lisbon to India. It's the oldest wreck ever found in southern Africa and the first in the region to be found laden with treasure, including gold coins and more than 100 elephant tusks. Researchers traced the ivory to the African forest elephant, a species native to the humid forests of West Africa and the Congo Basin. Until recently, scientists believed that the African forest elephant left its native habitat for the dry savanna as recently as the early 20th century. But the 500-year-old tusks found on the Bom Jesus probably came from elephants that were killed along the coast, indicating that the species left the rainforest as early as the 16th century. The findings surprised scientists who previously thought that different elephant species generally stuck to specific regions and habitats but the study puts the animals in a mixed environment and shows that they chose to migrate long before hunters came along and nearly drove them to extinction. While their reasons for doing so are unclear, learning more about the creature's past movement can help experts more effectively address modern-day concerns revolving around the illegal ivory trade. Number 6. Batavia The Batavia was a flagship of the Dust East India Company, a multinational corporation that once dominated world trade. During its maiden voyage to Southeast Asia in 1629, it wrecked roughly 50 miles off Australia's western coast. The ship's commander, Francisco Pelcert, went off in search of food and water, leaving 282 survivors behind on Beacon Island. He was gone for three months. During Pelcert's absence, a merchant named Geronimus Cornelis took control of the survivor colony. He ordered dozens of murders, including of women and children. His reign of terror ended when Pelsert returned and had him executed along with several other mutineers. The remaining survivors were rescued and the 150-foot-long Batavia went undiscovered until the 1960s. During excavations in the 1970s, the surviving part of the ship's stern section was raised and preserved. 
It's the only part of an early 17th century Dust East India Company vessel to ever be removed from the water. Records of where the timber for the ship came from are scarce, but a new study of its tree rings is shedding light on the wood's origins and age. The trees were felled around 1625 in northern Germany and the Baltic region, and the wood was processed shortly thereafter. It was still green when it was cut and used for building the Batavia. The researchers found that the shipbuilders discarded the timber's softer outer rings, or sapwood, which is more vulnerable to decay and shipworm infestation. This shows that the Batavia's builders were skilled craftsmen who had a lot of experience with the type of wood they were using. In addition to studying the ship, experts are investigating human remains that were buried on Beacon Island. Several mass graves have been discovered, amounting to 115 bodies in total. Some bore no signs of meeting a violent end, indicating that the individuals perished from dehydration. They may have gone crazy before they died. Others, namely those who were murdered by the mutineers, show signs of having suffered through horrific violence. One man's skull was partially lobbed off with a sword. The unspeakable tragedies that occurred here make for a particularly bizarre tale, even to the researchers who have long studied the signs of carnage that were left behind. Number 5. Navagio Beach Wreck On the Greek island of Zakynthos, there's a crescent-shaped beach that's only accessible by boat. Known as Navagio Beach, its focal point is the hull of a freighter that ran aground during the 1980s. The wreck sits in the pristine white sand, earning the site the nickname of Shipwreck Beach. It's also called Smuggler's Cove, owing to rumors that the freighter was used for smuggling cigarettes, wine, and other contraband. Surrounded by steep cliffs on all sides, the beach feels like a hidden getaway. But it's no well-kept secret. In fact, it was one of the most popular tourist destinations in Greece until a landslide injured seven people in 2018. After that, the Greek tourism ministry closed the beach to visitors for several obvious safety reasons. A committee was recently appointed to decide on the future of Navagio Beach, including the best ways to protect it and whether or not to open it to the public again. They're hoping to restore the wreck and to make the site safe for visitors by next summer and to reopen it in a way that enables local residents to benefit from tourism. Would you like to check out Shipwreck Beach if it reopens to the public? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 4. Ancient Carthaginian Galleys On March 10, 241 BC, a Roman fleet of ships destroyed a fleet of Carthaginian vessels off Sicily's northwestern coast in the Mediterranean Sea. It brought the First Punic War to an end, with Rome emerging victorious. During these types of sea battles, warships purposely crashed into each other in an effort to sink the enemy or to get close enough to board the enemy's ship and engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. To protect against damage and maximize the destruction against the enemy, ships were equipped with metal rams. Researchers have found the remains of some of the wrecked ships scattered along the seabed, where they've sat for over 2,000 years. A recent study found that one bronze ram was home to over 100 marine species, who repurposed the vessel for their own needs. The hollow metal piece was recovered and restored in 2017. As part of the process, the team collected and studied samples of the organisms living on it. They also examined the ram itself, which is covered with Punic inscriptions that they've failed to decipher thus far. By taking a closer look at the ancient debris as well as what's living on it, experts are learning more about the past, as well as how underwater creatures incorporate man-made objects into their natural habitat. Number 3. Jenny Lind the Jenny Lind was a small sailing ship that ran aground on a coral reef in the South Pacific in 1850 while traveling from Melbourne to Singapore. Thankfully, all 28 passengers aboard, including three children, survived the ordeal. But their journey to safety was just getting started. For the next 37 days, they lived on a cay of sand while building a makeshift vessel from the wreckage of the Jenny Lind. The group then sailed 370 miles to Morden Bay, near the Australian mainland. The wreck was still visible in 1987, according to a maritime survey that was performed that year. But archaeologists concluded in 2017 that the ocean had destroyed what was left of the ship, leaving literally nothing behind. During the expedition, the team found what was left of four other sunken vessels, including cannons, anchors, and ballast stones. They believe that the ships all sank sometime before 1850, which was around the same time that the reef began to appear on navigational charts. Located along a major trade route between Australia and Dutch and French Pacific colonies, the reef was strewn with wrecks as early as 1857, according to one historical record. So the Jenny Lind's disappearance isn't too surprising given the area's reputation for powerful tidal currents that are known to ravage what's left of wrecked vessels. 
Archaeologist James Hunter told Live Science that the reef is also dangerous because it's not easy to notice at high tide, and some ships have sailed right into it at full speed. Researchers hope to identify the wrecks that they explored during the 2017 expedition, which would help them learn more about the trading history of the region's early European colonies. Number 2. San Jose The San Jose was a Spanish galleon that wrecked off the Cartagena-Colombia coast in 1708 while sailing as part of the Spanish treasure fleet. It was laden with gold, silver, and emeralds when it crossed paths with a British squadron. Gunfire erupted, and the San Jose's powder magazines exploded, causing the ship to sink with most of its crew and all of its treasure on board. Only 11 sailors survived the harrowing ordeal. The cause of the explosion is a mystery. Some experts suspect that the captain shot the powder magazines because he would have rather seen the treasure plunge to the sea floor than to let it fall into British hands. The goods that went down in the sinking are thought to be worth more than $14 billion according to modern currency values. For centuries, treasure hunters scrambled to find the wreck in hopes of cashing in on a huge fortune. In 1981, the U.S. investor-funded Sea Search Armada expedition claimed to have found the San Jose. The Colombian government was quick to establish a new law giving it exclusive rights to the treasure, and authorities banned the explorers from excavating the site. A series of court battles ensued and the wreck was ultimately declared property of the Colombian state. The Colombian Navy rediscovered the sunken ship in 2015 and the battle for rights to the hoard resumed. This time, Spain tried to claim dibs on the goods. The indigenous Caracara people of modern-day Bolivia, whose land the treasures were extracted from, also expressed an interest in collecting on the fortune. Sea Search Armada is also still fighting for what it believes is its rightful piece of the pie. The case is currently working its way through the Colombian Supreme Court. Number 1. SS Central America The SS Central America was a steamer that sank off the South Carolina coast during a hurricane in 1857. Nicknamed the Ship of Gold, it was en route from Panama to New York City when it went down, taking 425 people and thousands of pounds of gold with it to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. During the 1980s, treasure hunter Tommy Thompson persuaded over 150 investors to finance his hunt for the wreck. They collectively ponied up $12.7 million for the expedition. Thomas and his crew discovered the wreck 8,000 feet below the water's surface in 1988. The following year, they recovered three tons of gold coins valued at over $50 million. The team was initially awarded a 92% share of the wreck, but a slew of lawsuits followed as investors accused the explorers of cheating them out of millions. 2012, Thompson failed to appear in court. He went into hiding with his girlfriend, and for the next three years they lived at a hotel, paying their living expenses entirely in cash and keeping a low profile to avoid drawing attention to themselves. The authorities eventually caught up with the couple. Ever since, Thompson has languished in federal prison while claiming he doesn't know where the treasure is. Of course, the judge doesn't believe his story, but Thompson refuses to budge. He recently marked his sixth year behind bars for refusing to disclose the location of the missing coins and he's racking up legal fines to the tune of $1,000 per day. All anyone can do now is wait patiently to see if eventually he'll crack. Thanks for watching. Which one of these abandoned shipwrecks would you be most interested in checking out? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.